Hey guys, James Preen, EFI, coming at you again with another uh, quick video. Um, this one is on Command Workstation 6.4. Um, I just wanted to introduce some of the new features in 6.4 and how these features um, could impact your cu current customers. And then obviously features you want to point out when you're doing a demo for future customers. So uh, hopefully everybody can see my screen here. Um, right off the bat, I just wanted to uh, give you guys some heads up on some new things you should be seeing. So first of all, over here to the left, um, you'll see there's a new view. This is not a queue. This completed is a view. In fact, it's a view that can be turned on and off. You can see when I select it, I have a hide. Okay, and if I hide this, it's no longer showing. To reshow it, all I do is right click on the three dots there and I can go show completed view. So what this view is, is unlike what some may think, is our printed queue is not a uh, set of jobs that have been printed on paper. So anytime you send a job to the process and hold queue, we rip the job. And when you rent, rip the job, there is a copy of it in the printed queue and one in the held queue. Thus, if you never print the job, it'll still show in the printed queue and in the whole queue, but it's never been printed. So the completed view is jobs that have actually been printed on paper. Okay, so you'll see there's a difference between the number of jobs in the printed queue versus the completed because this is in an error mode. Since that was an error job, it was processed and ripped, but it wasn't printed on paper, which means it's not in this view. So completed view is a customer's view that they can use to say what jobs did we really print on paper today? All right. Um, also over here down the bottom left if you click on this fiery smart search this is a way for a customer or anyone to get information about any topic within fiery that they're looking for and it searches four different places. It searches the user guides, uh, the help uh, fiery at efi.com it searches EFI communities and it escapes me where the fourth one is that it searches, but there's a fourth place. So basically you could type anything up in here that you're looking for um, and this will search those four locations and then not only does it give you a link to the actual article, but it tells you where it's getting it from. You can see there's one in help, there's these in communities and I could scroll through here and you can see there's a, a 378 pages of stuff about impose templates. So this is a, a nice little search feature for your customers. Um, when they've got questions, they need help with something, this searches every place that they normally would have to go to uh, individually. Okay, so some other things that are new in here I'm very excited about is this Fiery Health Monitor. So when I click on this, we are now looking at several categories on a Fiery depending on what kind of fire you have and what kind of features you have, um, what FS version your fiery is, we're going to be looking at some categories. And we're going to track these categories and list them according to red, yellow, orange. Red meaning it needs attention. Yellow is a warning. And green, everything's good. So if you look right here, you'll see that the first thing we're tracking is, does this machine have a backup scheduled on it? I mean, you should always have a backup. And if you haven't scheduled a backup to run automatically, the customer can click right here and it'll walk them through how to schedule a backup on that fire. Um, we're going to look at disk space storage. Uh, we're going to be looking at it if in fact it needs to be cleaned up instead of the customer or technician knowing how to do a disk clean. Customer can click clear and it'll take care of it. Same thing with optimizing the fiery. If you need to improve the performance of your fiery server, there are some hard copy documents on how to do this manually. But we've built that into the tool now. If you click optimize, it's going to optimize this fiery for the customer. And then the last one we're going to track here is the archive manager. Um, if you're not familiar with what the archive manager is, this is a way to truly archive the customer's jobs when they say, I need to save these jobs because we reprint these all the time. Nothing ever changes except for when the customer orders it in the quantity. So I need to save them. Well, right now, if you're saving them without um, Command Workstation 6.2, two or three or four, 
um, you're using our old archive tool, which basically puts the jobs on the fiery um, server's hard drive. Well, that's not good. If the hard drive crashes or if the tech has to replace a hard drive, the customer loses all their jobs. So Archive Manager is a tool that allows the customer to set up a, a archive location that is off of the Fiery controller on their network somewhere, part of their backup system, or on a, you know, a plug-in USB hard drive, something that's external from the Fiery, yet they can still manage those jobs inside a print queue and print those jobs over and over and over again without ever affecting the storage location. So if the Fiery hard drive was to crash, they'd still be able to use their archive queue. Okay, so i um, very excited about the health monitor. It's a pretty cool tool. Um, so some other features in here um, that, you know, is not easy to point out because um, you probably, you'd had to have experienced it before. Um, but we had a problem whenever you would go into properties with these, the property seems to come up very slow. You'll notice how quick that was. That's not an accident. It's because we redesigned how we're opening properties. Uh, it used to be that we had to load everything in order for properties to come up. And now what we're doing is we're not loading everything. Those are loading as you click on these items. So we're not waiting for all the categories to load up as we click on it. So that's definitely new. Something that has been asked for for a long time was to, to make that um, a little more efficient. Um, some other things... Uh, that I probably can't show you. Let's see if I can. Um, I can't show you that. So you guys may or may not have already known about this, but we are integrating more and more with offline finishing devices. So um, one of the things that you can do in Impose now, and I have to see if it's turned on first under my preferences, Impose. Okay, so right here um, I can pick um, the device that I'm using and then I can allow importing a finisher layouts. And when I turn that on, what it lets me do is if I go back into Impose from here, okay, there we go. Now that I've turned that on, if I have a Duplo 646 or one of the other devices that we support that's listed, <clears throat> um, I can go in here and I can say import finisher layout. So on a thumb drive, I would have the layout templates of all of the stuff that I programmed in my Duplo and I could import those into here and what it would do is overlay the layout onto my document. So as I'm laying this out, I will see where the pre-programmed slits, cuts, and creases are, or folds, whatever it is. And I can see that according to my imposition, so I know that when I print this, they're going to be correct when I go over to my Duplo. So it, it kind of helps, um, you know, decrease the amount of errors that you're going to have in wasted paper. But the other thing I think it does is it keeps me from having to go in here and using my registration, I might want the registration mark only, but I don't want the barcode because the barcode slows down my Duplo. So if I use the template that came from the Duplo and I'm using the same um, template when I run the Duplo, I can skip the barcode and it'll print faster, or excuse me, it'll finish faster. So that's, you have the capability of doing that in this version like you did the others. Um, so there's a bunch of other things you can do in 6.4. I'm not going to go through all of them because most some of the other ones, Spot Pro, um, is related to Graphics Arts Premium, so you'd have to have Graphics Arts Premium to use that. Um, and then there's some other enhancements um, with uh, using Freeform, which I've already posted a video on. So real quick, I just wanted to show you those few things. Um, 
and so that you can get these out to your customer, your current customers, and don't forget about showing these when you're doing a demo with new customers. All right, happy selling, guys.